Um, Dr. Kelvin looking as dapper as always, um, <laughs> typical Dr. Kelvin. Uh, we're going to have this conversation with him this morning. As you know, Dr. Kelvin, good morning, by the way. Good morning, Dr. <laughs> Kelvin. <laughs> good morning. As you know, um, we've been having a very um, serious situation with the breakout of Lassa fever. It's been in the news the last couple of days, and um, somebody has already passed on, mm -hmm. you know, from it. And we want to find out what is Lassa fever and, you know, what do we need to know? How do we protect ourselves in these times? You know, after COVID, right now, everybody's um, antennas <laughs> know, have come right? up, you know, and it's <laughs> looking at how to protect themselves with whatever is going to come, you know. So now we're going to find out about Lassa fever. Dr. Kelvin. David. How are you? I'm very well, very Tell well. Tell today you sat down. I mean, <laughs> uh, what is there? What is there? Okay, what's the Okay, where are you going after here? Oh, because uh, you did, it's not because of us that you should. No, it's, because, it's because of you. Yeah, but earlier on you called him the, the guy with the panache. With panache, yeah. So why yeah. are you surprised that he shuddered? Oh, well, I mean, no, but he, this one is good. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to work. I'm going to attend to my, my, uh, my amazing clients. So hey. I have to look the part. Oh, wow. <laughs> nice. <laughs> You're welcome. Thank you very much. Good to have you as well. This Thank is my first you. time meeting you. Yeah. <laughs> Charlie, what's, how, what do we need to know about... Lassa fever. What is this whole Lassa fever business? I mean, we're there, everything was nice and quiet in the country. Well, not quiet, <laughs> but you know, at least uh, managing what we can manage yeah. so far with yeah. all the, uh, the lack of vaccine challenges and mm. all those things. And then suddenly we hear Lassa fever has been falling. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's not a new thing. I mean, it's, it's, it's been around. It's a West African um, virus, and I it's see. been around for a while. Oh, I think that, yes, the first time it was documented was somewhere in the 1950s. Oh, okay. In fact, it gets its name from, like from, from Nigeria, and mm. the town in Nigeria where it was first discovered. Mm. You know, so that's where the name comes from, so Lassa fever. Mm -hmm. So it's a viral infection, and it's, it's part of the hemorrhagic um, viral infection. So you have um, its other cousins, inclu including Ebola, okay. yeah. even yellow fever. Mm. You know, so they, they, they all sort of, mm. it's, they, are, they are in a category called the viral hemorrhagic um, fevers. You know, even though they are not the, they are not the same kind of viruses, but they sort of have similar mm. um, consequences, which includes the bleeding. You know, so that's typically one of the one of the, the, the late features of Lassa fever. So you have bleeding from various orifices, so the nose, wow. the gums, you know, the anus. But eventually, every opening can begin to bleed. Mm. So that's one of the later um, symptoms of Lassa fever. So as I said, it's not new in, in West Africa. In Ghana, we've been spared the most the we've been spared the, the most of Lassa fever. But mm. in Nigeria, in Sierra Leone, for instance, I mean mm. these, these are areas where almost every year they have to deal with some form of Lassa fever. <laughs> yes. Now, even though I mean, if you open the, if you went on the internet and you read about it, they will tell you that the, the case fatality is only about one percent. You know, where we, to, to say that if, if 100 people were to get Lassa fever, mm. only about one person would die. Okay. You know, so it makes it seem like it's not a serious thing, but it is a serious thing because if 100 people were to be admitted on account of Lassa fever, yeah. 20 of them would die. So it tells you, so once you change the focus, you realize that it's actually a big deal. Wow. Wait, <laughs> so how does that work? Because if, if you say 1% and it's um, jumping to... Mm -hmm. 20%, what does that mean? I mean, so, does, how does that happen? So it tells you that, I mean, there's a, there's a wide range of presentations. First of all, about 80% about of people who actually get infected would typically not develop serious disease, you know, and most of, them, most of them would not even know they were infected, so they would probably recover, you okay. know, without ever reporting to hospital, mm -hmm. you know. But of the few people that would, that would, develop, to, um, would develop severe disease, then the fatality rate goes up significantly, Ooh. you know, from 1% okay. all the way up to 20%. Okay. So, so that's, is, is, is it contagious? It is contagious. Um, however, it's not as contagious as, let's say, common cold, even though they are viruses. Mm -hmm. So typically, let's, start, let's take it from how you get it in the first place. So mm -hmm. it's, it's actually a, a, an animal disease. You know, so it's called the zoonotic. Zoonotic infections are infections that can jump from animals from to, animal hum to humans. To the human, you know, yeah. But the reservoir of the infection is actually the rats. So I, I, I wow. think, yes, it's safe to say that it's, it's, it's pretty much... People eating... That's one way, but that's yeah. not the, common, the most common way. Uh, the most common way of getting infected is actually from rats playing around Broken. your food. Oh, okay. so your food. Yes, you, they are dropping, their urine, you know, so they, they, oh. they secrete the virus through their, their, uh, their um, they expel the virus through their yeah, secretion. Okay. You know, so, so if, if, if a rat, let's say, you, you, you store your food, your cans, or whatever, and then the rats um, come around it, they pee on it, they, they, mm. they poo-poo on it, mm -hmm. and you don't clean it, 
you know. So I remember way back in primary school, our teacher, there was a lesson where we were taught that when you pick, let's say, a can of milk, before you open it, you have to wash it with water. Yeah. I never understood it until medical school. <laughs> oh. You know, so this is actually one of the reasons why it's important you to wash. You can't just take a can and, and open. Just open it. Exactly. And, and no, it's, it's unacceptable. It's not wow. allowed. Wow. You know, because, wow. and especially if you live in a place where there is an issue with rats. Yeah. You know, and that's pretty much the story of a significant part of um, our urban, yeah. even, even rural um, areas, mm. you know, because yeah. the rats come in, they eat their share, they play with the rest, and then they go away. You may not see them, mm. but sometimes you can actually smell that they've been here, mm. Mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so if you ignore all these things and you just open your can and start eating, you are exposing yourself to some of these things, including Lassa fever, mm. you know. And now that there is, an, a, a, there is a confirmed, a in fact, there are mm. confirmed cases in Ghana, you want to be extra careful, you see, because it is, it is, it is spread that easily. And you see, if the rats population, they, they expand or they, they multiply very, very quickly. So if there's, a, there's Lassa fever in the, in the rat population, the risk of it spreading is very high. And mm -hmm. so right now, everybody, even though only two cases have been recorded, we all need to be on high alert, you see, because, I mean, it's difficult to control the rats. Mm -hmm. So you have to mind what you're eating. Very, very important. So um, does that mean, okay, yeah, we might, some people might say, yes, I don't have rats in my house, but obviously that means when you go out to buy stuff exactly. from, you know, the convenience stores, maybe we're buying sardines and, you know, canned food, any sort of food, mm -hmm. that means you can also contact the convenience exactly. even though you have no rats in your exactly. house. Exactly. And so I, I, the lesson is that everybody needs to clean their, your cans before you eat it because the convenience store might have a rat problem. Yeah. <laughs> so the fact that you don't have rats in your house does yeah. not mean you are, you are safe. Yeah. So you have, to, you have to clean your cans, every can, whether it's milk, whether it's sardine, whether it's... Um, Anything, anything basically, you know, can, can expose you to the virus. And so you want to avoid that. Can you imagine these people that do uh, chibum? Exactly. In the night. <laughs> exactly. Chibum, chibum and tea. Yeah. Yeah, and then they open their they can. They just open, the, the, open their can, you know, and then they don't mm -hmm. clean it mm -hmm. before they open their can. And, it, it, and it's, not, it's not just limited to cans. Everything, I mean, anything. Let's, let's use, I mean, the, spa the spaghetti. Yeah. You know, right. if the rat has peed on the package, you know, you open it up. Remember, you are, hold, you are holding yeah. it with your yeah. hand. You open it up, and then you now, we, as, as we do, you break it with the hand that's already contaminated. You break it into the pot, yeah. you know. And so it's, do we watch it's, the it's right there in <laughs> Every, the pot. So to be on the safe side, basically, virtually everything, you know, everything is at risk. So, I mean, the ideal thing would have been to find a way to prevent the rats from coming into our, 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 our homes, our spaces, homes in yeah. the first place. I don't know how that is feasible in the short term. You know, so right now we all need to be on guard, you know, very important. But that is just one way. So that's how it gets into the human population. When it comes into the human population, it can also spread from person to person. Mm. You know, and mm. in this regard, this is spread through, again, secretions. Yeah. So cl uh, usually close contacts of the infected person mm. are most at risk. Mm. You know, so secretions like vomiting, like urine, like um, Spit, yeah. exactly. All these things can um, transmit the infection from one person to another person. You know, so if somebody is demonstrating any, or any, any symptoms um, that are suspicious, you know, if, if you are not trained to handle it, you need yeah. to avoid contact as much as mm. possible. What about sweat? Sweats they typically would not, mm -hmm. you know, so they would say that, I mean, you can actually have So it's like a lot of conditions that are spread like through droplets. Mm -hmm. Sweat seems to Sweats, be an area yeah. that somehow... And we should be happy that yeah, it's like yeah, that because, because that, that would be a problem. It's a large no, organ but, with skin no, but, is a large um, organ. When it comes to COVID, <clears throat> at, in the gyms, Mm. Yeah, but but, but that, that's not no, from sweat. That's, that's usually sweat. from you know it's when the, you're exactly expiration, expiration yeah. and, and when you're talking, I mean it's it, it's droplets. droplets all over the place. You know, I mean if sweat was part of the part of the thing, would we'll be we'll, finished. We'll, I'm telling you, <laughs> <laughs> you know. So yes, thankfully, sweat is not um, really a major uh, source of transmission, mm. and we are we, we are happy with that. Mm. All right. Yeah. So when it comes to the severity, like um, in the in, in the news that we read about, um, you know. The two persons that you know have been found that have this disease i mean one person died I mean, yes. so rest in peace but his age was age 40 like does it have to do with age for it to say okay maybe it's severe with people of certain age mm -hmm. group or maybe underlying so, conditions so t so typically i mean typically uh, people who are at the extremes of ages are always at risk in some of these things because because they most of the time are not able to take uh, to take care of themselves 
by themselves. <laughs> I don't know if that's mm -hmm. a good phrase. Mm -hmm. You know, so they depend on others. And so it makes it a bit of a challenge. And then they, they, they themselves are already um, under, undernourished. Mm -hmm. You know, so somebody, a, a very old person, typically has, has comorbidity. So that person yeah. is probably diabetic. So the immune system is already challenged and then gets um, an attack by this virus. So uh, the, it's not able to mount a defense enough to resist resist the the attack from the from the virus and so mm. they they succumb to it so extreme, extremes of ages are always a, a, at risk people with hypertension people with other uh, medical conditions have a higher risk people who already have HIV, for instance, mm -hmm. have a problem with their immune system, so they also tend to be at risk. Mm -hmm. You know, so I mean, this is a time for everybody to be to be each other's keeper. You know, if you are feeling any anything that you are not too sure what's going on, you need to always go in for a checkup, and then let's let's um, uh, uh, see how we can attend to you. Because I did mention that if the disease is severe, you know, in the severe in people with severe disease, the fatality rate is almost at twenty percent. Mm -hmm. You know, so it means that how early we able to get intervention helps improve the outcome yeah you know but yeah. of course if, if everybody was as clear if, if everything was as clear cut it wouldn't have been a problem yeah. here is the case where um, um, most people who even have the infection will never even know that they have the infection hmm. you know <laughs> and then those who even show symptoms the symptoms are so non-specific until it becomes extremely severe you know so as it's with as it is with most viral infections you probably just have a, a simple uh, you feel like you have a cold you have a sore throat maybe um, some yeah. chest pain yeah. so so non-specific you know so it's not like there's there's no classic symptom that you feel and know that this is last fever let me yeah. quickly go and get treatment yeah. you know and it, i don't know why it's always like that mm -hmm. you see i mean a bit of headache tiredness yeah. you know throat, throat is a bit scratchy and then you go in and then suddenly <laughs> in the later stage you should start bleeding from your gums yeah. and so your nose, it's, your it's nose. at the point of the bleeding that now you know and exactly. it's obvious that like there's something this is no longer flu exactly <laughs> yeah, because, <laughs> and you know when we have flus like we tend to just sit back and just say okay let me just do some home treats yeah so would you say it's best for for you to just isolate because it was after COVID that I realized mm -hmm. that it's actually very important for people to isolate mm -hmm. when they feel certain ways. But I know that, yeah, things are hard, people yeah. are hustling. So no one even wants to tell you they're sick these yeah. days. I know, they're just right? in the middle of, I mean, yeah. they're just in the middle of everyone else and just doing their thing. So mm -hmm. what would you say? Would you say like, it, it, would you say it's best for people to isolate or just keep moving on with their life? Hmm. I mean, it's a difficult question to answer, to be honest. I mean, but what, what I'll say is, you see, we are still in the COVID and, I, and I've said in the past that COVID um, it has been a kind of blessing mm -hmm. because now there is a culture where people living get the ordinary cold, common and cold, and then the exactly. Yeah. So that that habit has become a part of us, and it's it's really going to help going yeah. forward. You know, or if you yourself, if you feel like I'm going into a crowded area, let me let yeah. me let yeah. me protect yeah. myself. Fact, Dr. Kevin, it's interesting how you can walk into a shopping mall, and a few people will be wearing their masks, yeah. and yeah. and it's normal. It's like yeah. it's not looked upon strangely. Exactly. Which is oh wow, so wow in Ghana. This exactly. Is, this is impressive. You know, so that's so that I I think that that, that habit should be encouraged because it could it could help us a, a, a lot because even even if even if you did um, um, touch something because of that COVID mindset, your probability of you going to wash your hands yeah, is, is higher high. now and than it was in the past. And the use of mm. Exactly. You know, and so all these things can help us even in dealing with um, with this as something. well yeah. mm -hmm. however what i'll say is that i mean everybody has had a common cold before and most of us know how it feels when you have a common cold yeah. you know you'd have headache you know maybe a day or two you know the nose will start running and then you recover after 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 a couple of days mm -hmm. you know but if you have a sim similar presentation but it's a bit more severe than than it, it used to be then you know that you know that you should, question, you should yes yeah. you should be asking questions could it be COVID? Mm -hmm. could it be that could it be Lassa fever? Mm -hmm. You know, then you go in. And you see, again, this is where we need to be each other's keeper. You know, if you are feeling such severe symptoms and you go, you go into hospital, it's always good to, you know, sort of give accurate information so that the health personnel can also protect themselves early enough. Yeah. Yeah. You know, we are in a, in a resource-poor um, um, setting, right? And so it's not possible for the health personnel to be always um, wearing the, PPEs. exactly the PPEs, because if we were to wear PPEs, <laughs> trust me, it, it wouldn't even last a week. You know, so most of the time, what happens is that um, we wait to be notified of what's going on before yeah, you know we put yeah. things in place. So if you are experiencing some of these things and you go in, you know it's good to communicate quickly. <laughs> yeah, but are there test kits and vaccines for AIDS yet right now? Because obviously now with COVID, you can just walk in and they'll test you and say, okay, you're positive. But are there test kits? So, you know, this is also a social, a social problem. I mean, once you hear rats and all these things, it tells you that it's pretty much a poor person's... Um, mm. So 
that sort of set the tone for where I'm going. Mm. Now, mm. <laughs> now because of the challenges when it comes to this, this and it's a West African problem. Yes. yes. Uh, now, um, who should be funding those research oh. to to now lead to the vaccine vaccines coming out? Mm. That's the challenge. So even though there's research ongoing, it's been it's taking a long time. I mean, like I said, the first case was documented as far back as 1950. We are mm. in 2023. You know, so it's taking us this long and we still don't have a vaccine. A vaccine. Thankfully, we have treatment available, even though the treatment needs to be started early. You know, so the, the earlier that intervention is started, the more likely it's going to be, it's going to make the positive impact that we are hoping yeah. for, you know. So reporting early <coughs> is important. Early mm. recognition and identification. Unfortunately, again, um, um, before COVID, Diagnosing this was quite challenging because mm -hmm. it needed PCR mm -hmm. and other things. But now, mm -hmm. thankfully, th thanks to COVID, we have a few PCR machines. And so uh, diagnosis is a bit faster, even mm -hmm. though it's still slow. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's much faster than it was in the past. Yeah. You see, so we are, we are getting the painstakingly slowly, slowly. Mm -hmm. you know, but we are making progress. <laughs> right. All right, Dr. Kerman, um, thank you very much for this. How do people get in touch with you? Well, I'm active on social media, Kelvin mm -hmm. Osu, MD, on all social media channels. Okay. And you can also reach our clinic as well, Claron Health International, and we will definitely attend to you. Fantastic. Thank you very much. We've been speaking with Dr. Kelvin Owusu of the Claron Health International Hospital. Well, we'll be right back. Don't go anywhere. There's more to come.